So good morning all you happy pointers. Morning from Windy Margate. So back inside. This is what was raked out the other day. Uh, we've done the four panels there. It's all been pointed out. Uh, I don't even remember the the crack that was going down the wall. So that's all been done. All the bricks have been taken out. They've been replaced. Uh, I'm not too happy about them. just replacing the bricks. So uh, what I did was uh, put some put some heli bar in there. So all this. And this side and here, heli bar, heli bar. So that should be. Uh, I feel a lot better doing it rather than just leaving it. Put a Bob the Builder fix on it now. Just do it. Bricks are out, so put the bar in. Yeah, it's looking, looking nice. Uh, it's very nice now. That's the next panel to do. Uh, that one there. I do like to uh, get the wall pointed to a state where I can then decide what bricks I'm going to take out, what bricks I can get away with. You know, some don't look too bad once it's been pointed. They look quite quirky in the wall. And, and not only that, I mean, if it's just the front that's soft, you know, take what you can away. If it's you get down to a bit of hard brick, leave it. You know, why, why try to fix what ain't broken? You know, like you've got low spots like that. You don't leave it. It's, it looks nice and it's not so much, it's not flaking off so right? So leave it, yeah. I'm going to change these ones here. Uh, I've done these here. Uh, and again, I've chipped away with the all saw, and we go back probably two or three inches there. It, it gets to a solid rock hard brick, so you know, put, probably put some slips along there. Uh, yeah, got some nice red stocks turned up, so why not just cut them down? I mean, Jesus, <coughs> yeah, same as this up there, so yeah. It's, I'm not going to be able to recover these bricks. No way. Uh, so, yeah, put some new red stocks in there. And we've got 600 turning up today, 650, something like that. So, yeah, get this done, that panel done. Uh, Dave's finished raking out all the bottom, this side. So, um, I'm going to leave that last. I'm going to work. I'm going to work from the bottom up. When I change the bricks, uh, I've got the acro to go in there and the stronger with it. Let me get this done. Just safety because we have got another uh, floor above us and there's a lot of brickwork up there, so I just want to be safe rather than sorry. Uh, yeah, definitely. So Dave's been on this yesterday. So he's We've raked it all out now. So again, what I'll do is uh, start from the bottom. It seems to be this bottom panel under the scaffold tower here is uh, it's pretty good, Nick. It's, it's pretty good. Probably one or two bricks there to change, I think. But as, as we go up to the second, the second panel there, the bricks start showing signs of spalling, decaying. Uh, ever so soft, so I'll probably start from the bottom and work up changing the bricks. It just makes life easier for me. Rather than start taking big gaping holes out of the top, uh, you've got more chance of, you know, bricks falling. Again, that corner there needs to be addressed. Uh, it's, there's an old dumb waiter behind that sheet, it used to go from the top to the bottom. It houses all the, the pipes, the water pipes, so 
the kind of, some idea to sort of drop that in. Although the owner does like it, does it's, it's, it's got that little quirky thing going on. So yeah, as you can see, there's a big difference to that. To that. Yeah, looking forward to this uh, getting it done. I'll probably put the get the bricks put back in. Well, put the heli bar there, the strengthening bar. Uh, and then crack on with that probably mainly. If we're, we're limited to the noise we can make here because uh, they, it is a hotel pub hotel. So uh, the room above and the room this way, uh, yeah, they've got uh, paying guests in. So we've got a sort of, we had a window yesterday where we sort of just banged it out, all the noisy stuff at the all sorts and what have you done yesterday. So uh, today is, it's just pointing. So put the radio on on my earbuds and away I go. Uh, get that panel pointed in there and then start on that one there. It's taking so much lime, more. Oh my God, it's taking so much. But there you go. Probably have to go up next week to visit Declan and get another ton of sand or a couple of ton of sand. <clears throat> right, okay, I'll, uh, I'm going to crack on, uh, I might do a little bit of me pointing up, see how we go, see how I feel, alright, so in a bit, happy pointing. Right, so I've got a little bit of pointing there, uh, I've soaked the wall down, uh, trouble is when you point in old walls like this, they do suck the water in there. The moisture, uh, it's just like as soon as you spray it, it's like so. My advice would be just to do a small patch first, do it in small patches, don't try and bang the whole lot out because by the time you get to here, it's going to be bone dry, the wall is just going to be sucked away into the old line. Yeah, it's so just uh, give it two or three good soakings before you, you start your pointing. Uh, that way, you can be assured that there is some little bit of moisture left in there. So it's just get it in there basically. Uh, I use a couple of pointers, a couple of these I use. Uh, I use a wire one, 10 mil and, a, and, and an 8 mil. Uh, sometimes you get the small burps, so that I like that straight over the top of the big one. It's a bit messy before you've got to clean off. So yeah. Uh, Get a nice bit on the old pointing tool, start wherever you want to start. I know that I'll soak down to about here. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll crack on with the corners first, get the corners in. When you put this, uh, when you point the line, I like to go proud. So just so far I can say, point that one, get it in there. One in at least. It depends what finish you want. If you want it flush, then go above it, but it's going to be recessed this uh, with, a, with a stick, so that's fine. But push it right to the back. Don't be scared to get it in there. Uh, any overspill you've got, any edges, just leave it, let it dry to the stage where you can rub down. So if you're going, So if you're left with it, your edges, leave your edges on. Don't try and scrape them off. Yeah, just just let that dry off. I mean, I've been I've been pointing and all these sections, these uh, bottles here. I'll be coming in the next day, and it's still been a little bit soft. Uh, again, it's. Just leave it for the rest of the day, or just keep looking at it, keep monitoring it, you know. It's uh, when it's ready to rub down, you'll know. Good way is just push with your finger. It's too, 
Too soft there, but just don't do it. Stay away from it. It's a little bit windy down here today, not a great deal, but I don't know what time it's going to kick off here with the wind. With the wind. Probably a sheet in going billy out the back there. This brickwork just sucks it up. The amount you've got to put in there. These bricks aren't exactly flush, they're all over the place, so I mean you're gonna be left with little bits like this on here. It's not avoidable. And it's it's wetter than I, I'd like to use it, but I wanna get this right to the back. Uh, I want it to stick. It makes this a little bit dry. Because these bricks are so dry and porous, and I just want that extra bit of moisture in the, in the line. Got some big old perks here. The amount of water we've done with coverage here, yeah, I think uh, this is about the third mix, third dustbin. It's just absolutely swallowing it. But I am. I don't know how it's been for you for the last year, uh, work-wise. But uh, it was a very busy year for us last year. It's, uh, what's it done? Been a busy one this year. I'm fully booked for the next six months. Well, we've got to take on little bits and pieces. Weekend work and stuff like that. But I want to try and give yourself some weekends off. Um, yeah, sort of uh, neglecting the decorating. I've been doing a bit of decorating in the evening when I get in. Uh, I've also got a boat in the harbour. Uh, I've got a bit of work to do on that this year. Dedicate yourself a bit of time. Got a holiday coming up in the main. Just keep a little wire brush handy for the pointing tool. Sometimes you, when you put it in, you can feel the, 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 the tool dragging. So it picks up a little bit of mud. So give it a little, uh, little clean. Cure that for me.
So I've got a couple of small perts here and I used a really thin pointing tool for that to get it right to the back. I'll uh, put a link up uh, with regards to the pointing tools. I buy these, they're, they're just amazing little tools, and they're not, not expensive even. You get, I think it's about six, seven in a set. They're just incredible value. So you've got like this, when you've got a low spot on this brick here, I mean you can get away with it. If, if, when you point it, point it flush as though you're cossing it, like you're doing stonework. So by the time that's, uh, that's been churned off, you, you won't notice it, it, it just looks... It looks quirky. I mean, you're not trying to make a new wall. When you're doing this, the building, 1760, something like that. It's, uh, it looks dreadful if you just try to try putting new bricks and new fronts on it. It's not in, it's not in character with it. You point, bring it, so there's how you're putting a wedge. Like you're doing a wedge, you, you get an angle on your, your brickwork so that when it comes to, uh, I mean, don't be scared to put a load in there, you know, don't be scared because you want it to blend in when you churn it, build it up like your edges, you, all that will disappear and it will look a part of the wall, it just look like it's been there, it should be there. Yeah, there's a lot of pointing work going on around, it, uh, around this area at the moment. Loads of it. Uh, I've got quite a few of the old uh, late 18th century buildings around here. Uh, it was a busy last year because people just weren't going on holiday due to COVID. And they were uh, spending money on the asses. I don't think 
I managed to sit and see one builder that wasn't busy last year. It's been really difficult getting older builders, apparently. Again, the bricks are lower. Don't be scared, build it right up. Because when you turn that off, you rub back with a your stick or your whatever you're using. Uh, it's going to look the part of it here. Just make the brick fit. Give you more to play with around the edges. If you're pointing and you fill it, you, you start dragging. You're dragging your muck. It could be two things. It could be the face of the, the pointing tool or the edges. Yeah? Just give them a clean at the edge and, you know, you'll, it should cure it for you. You can feel it. You can feel when it starts pulling. That's a, that's a good sign of uh, it needs cleaning. Push it right into the back. I think 
everybody shows you the work that they've done, but they know it. And very few show you how to do it. It's, uh, it's not a secret. It's like uh, when they're mixing the, the lime up, you know. Some people say oh, that's a secret recipe, and you know, it, it does. Uh, that's annoying me sometimes. There's no secret, you live and learn. There's what pots and into one in it, it's just knowing the mixes and you know, it's not science, really. Yeah, good girl. The method varies when you're, you're pointing to what brickwork you're, you're actually pointing. Uh, I mean, these bricks are all over the place, so I pile it on, you know, I, I get it in there. Uh, you use a lot more, but I think it gives you more scope uh, to when you rub down with your stick and you can leave as much in there as you like in between the, the, the joints. Uh, yeah, I like to leave plenty hanging over in these little voids here. Yeah. Quite a pace, because when you rub down, you want the corners to blend in. I'll, I'll explain that to you a bit better when I, I'll rub down. Drop this down, I'll put a little short video on it for you. Like I say, I've not put many videos up for the simple reason is I've not been able to film there. You know, I like to ask people, you know, I'll just go ahead and put the camera up. It's, like I say, I do respect people's uh, wishes. For some reason or other, it's uh, some like don't mind you filming, some, you know, a little bit. Mm, that's, that's cool, you know, I respect their personal space. It just means I don't get a lot up on the channel. I'm not looking to grow a community, I'm just looking to sort of show people, help people, you know, it's not that. Some of these YouTube channels, they're like, it's all about, oh, you know, followers. You know, if people just come across my videos, that's, that's all I want. You know? there's, there's a load of knowledge base out there on YouTube. Some of it good, some of it absolutely crap. Uh, some of it, you can waste your lifetime watching it and think, well, what did I learn? Not a lot, really. So I've got a little bit of a void there, it's, uh, so I'm just going to bang a bit more in there. Build it up, don't be scared. Especially with these old bricks. The proof is 
it's in the pudding. It's all in the finish with the brickwork. Some people will fingers and thumbs when they got pointed tools and don't be, don't be scared, have a go, you know. Save yourself a few bob. Do it yourself. <coughs> Nothing says you've got to do a wall in a day, it's uh, edge it out. You know, do it over three or four weekends. Take your time. I can feel that drag in there. So it's time. It's time to uh, just to be a clean. That's better. And if you're doing a project of your own, uh, on your own genus, you've got a big water point. The only thing you've got to do, and be careful, and it's, I think it's one of the best tips I can give you when you're doing large areas, is when you mix, make sure that uh, you get that mixture right every single time, your measurements, get them right every single time. So if you're doing a big area, it's going to look patchy. Yeah, it's going to be different colours. So, you know, be meticulous about when you mix it. Uh, I mean, if you're doing lime, if you're doing the hot mix lime, uh, I'll do a dustbin at a time, dustbin, two dustbins. Uh, once that's mixed, put a plastic bag over the top and just cover it. Yeah, it's good. You know, it'll last you, it'll last you ages. Uh, even if you, you put it into five, ten litre tubs, airtight. Put the lid on, you can use those throughout the year, it doesn't make no difference. It's, you don't have to use hot mix lime, hot, uh, far from it. It's, uh, it works by carbonation. Once it hits the air, it starts uh, curing. And as long as you keep it in a cell container, you're fine. So you've got little stones like this stick out. Put it in there, don't be scared. Put it up to the edges of the of the brick. It's uh well let's cross it in the brick. It's like stonework, you know, so you're doing exactly the same. But on brick, it's uh once it's churned back, it looks it looks amazing. I tend to deal with the old property. It's, uh, I was asked to point an house the other way. It was a council house, and I'm sorry, but I, I don't do cement work. I don't touch cement. And they looked at me as though I was, you know, what? But you point. Yeah, I know. I know I point, but I do line pointing. There's a difference. Uh, I mean, if you look in the back of my van, you won't find one bit of cement in there. Nothing like that in there.
and it's all down to end and my coordination. That's all it is. You see the people banging this in. Uh, if you look on the floor, there's, there's no, there's nothing really. There's just nothing you drop. That's the beauty of what line. It just stays on the on the point. It's all. <coughs> So, I think in my previous videos, I have shown you how to get quicker uh, using a pointing tool. Getting them up in there. It's as soon as you look there, and now I'm looking at the perp. Okay? So I'm going straight up and in. Yeah, I'm not putting it on there, holding the tuck and going like that. I'm not looking for the perp. Because I've already got that in my vision, the perp. I know how much I've got to go on there. Straight up and in. I'm looking at that perk before. I'm getting to it. You know what I mean? I feel it. And then with where I've got to go. So, your board is like that, okay? I'm going to take that much and put it wherever in that part there. So, as soon as I grab that load and I pull the hole, I pull the hole, yeah? I don't tend to push the point. If you look, the actual hook is moving, yeah? It's only when I'm working on the edge like that that I don't bother pulling it because I know it's there. But I'm working up the hook. I'm in. That's the trick. <coughs> Just a little panel like that. That's more than enough. Uh, it's just more than enough. Uh, by the time you get to there, this is all starting to dry out. And that's no good. You want it to, uh, you want it to push to the back and you want it to stick. You want it to get in there, joints. Stay in there. Give this a little bit of suction. See with this one here, it's quite a bit missing, but once I point it and I overlap, you're more or less crossing the brick, you're like stonework. And it, it brings the, uh, it gives it another perspective with the depth. It's not like it's a early 19th century, it's not like an old 1920s house. It's, uh, it's got loads of character, this old building. And, you know, I think the art is, is trying to keep that character. You know, let's not put too many new bits and pieces in it. Let's just uh, try and make it look like you know, it's been looked after. like the timbers, you know. I've, I've got quite a few of these at the yard. It's, I keep them. Old buildings, I love it. You know, if I've got to put a little bit of two before, a bit of CLS in there, yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, Open the wood, just screams out sometimes. Use me. I hate throwing stuff away. Really do. Heartbreaking. 
I can't walk past the skip when I see an old house being renovated. The amount of stuff they throw away, it's, it's, it's criminal. That's it, especially around here, absolutely criminal. Remember, it's not all about speed, okay? It's about how you get it on there, how you get it in there, and get it to the back. That's the important part. Get it to the back of the, the joint. It's not, uh, it's not a fashion show. You do all the fancy bits and pieces when you're pointing up. Uh, sorry, rubbing down. Yeah. You're rubbing it up with a stick. Doing the edges. That's where it comes. It's getting good looking brickwork. The finishing touches. Hi, Tom. I'm happy with it. It's like, oh. Okay, <coughs> then it's uh, down to doing the next panel. So, what I'll do is I'll uh, give this a soak now, give it a good soak. A real good soaking, don't be scared. So there are bricks that's got to come out along here, but what I tend to do is I point up and see what I can get away with, you know. Um, we've got bricks like these that are jotting out, but I see what I can get away with, you know. We've got quite a bit missing from here. Let's see, let's see what we can do. See what it looks like. Don't take out what you don't need to take out. This is my methodology, isn't it? Methodology. It's the, uh, yeah. It will look nice when it's done. A chocolate box finish. Right, time to put the kettle on. Cup of coffee. Come back in about three or four minutes. Give that another soap down, a really good soap. And then five or ten minutes later, get the muck in. So I'm going to put the kettle on for a cup of coffee. And I'll see you in a bit. Happy pointing. second panel now working on this half of it uh, I've got a, a few bricks I need to change for both the middle panel and the well it looks like I've got uh, two and a half probably panels there 
with bricks that I just can't recover. Uh, gonna have to uh, take them out and replace them. So this is at its third soak. It seems to be ever so dry over here. It's uh, it's just sucking the water in. I mean, this was done literally three, four minutes ago. It's just drawn it in like a sponge. And that's what I mean by the pointing gun. You know, you can wet it down all fair and you know, really wet it down, but it dries out so quick. I like to be reassured that I'm getting that muck to the back and it's I'm getting pressure behind it on the, the pointing tool. Uh, as I say, with a gun, you can't put any pressure behind it. You've just got to hold it there and just lay it in. It, it, it's making no contact with the back as far as to go as to say pressure. Yeah, you can't put any pressure behind a pointing gun. I just can't, you know, I can't believe really I use it doing line work. I really can't. It's all about getting it there and making it stick to what you wet down. Anyway, as all my videos, they're just for education. I mean, if you've got a problem with them, then that's your choice to watch them, isn't it, really? But I've been doing this long enough now just to tell you the pitfalls and you know, best way of doing things, or my way of doing it, my best way of doing things, but it might not be to your liking, you know? It's only a, it's only a guide one, for God's sake. People possess to be experts. X as in used to be, and spurs as in drip. Believe me, they are. Some of you talk, you just got to walk away from them. Sort of bite your lip, too, look, mate. I've been at this game so long. I don't profess to be the best. Far from it. Jesus Christ. Far, far from it. I work the way it works best for me. No, nobody else. You always find a better way of doing things. Don't forget my dad. God bless his soul. He said, if you want to find an easy way of doing it, son, get a lazy bastard on it. Get someone that's lazy to do a job. And they'll always find the easiest way to do it. That's so true. So true, they always find the easiest route to do it. You can't work it out if someone's lazy to do it. So you've got a big hole there, fill it. But it's totally different once it's a big stick down and brush, but plenty in there. Remember, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Take your time. And get it right to the back. When you get the narrow joints, well, not too narrow, you know it hurts. When you put your muck in, like that, Push it in and then turn the tool and then strike down. And all you're left with is a little indent there to fill. And your next lot will fill that right up. You don't have to keep changing pointing tools to get the width. I 
I do like to do my videos in real time. You know, not to video something and then say, right, well, I'm going to point that. Yep. Then come back when you pointed it and say, well, there you go, that's what I've done. I want to show you what I do and how I do it. So, uh, I know they're long winded, but get yourself a cup of tea and a biscuit. That's what my missus says to me, you know. Thought oh, your videos go on for such a long time. I said, yeah. The simple reason is, you know, people are showing these pointing videos and not showing people how to do it. It's, it's so bloody secret. You know, it's not a national secret. We've all done the jobs and you get some guys out there just solely work off of YouTube all the time. Jesus, I know, I know builders that refer to YouTube. They're not sure how to do something. But it's, it's not saying it's the correct way to do it. There's no correct way of doing it. You just have a good knowledge base of talking. How to do things, you know, what to use. And, and there's not enough videos out there on YouTube to sell you that. So why not? I mean, skip through. Just jump through different scenes on the video. You might not be for you, this. You know? Well, it might not be your cup of tea sitting here for an hour or however long my videos are, just in an old sweat point. But it's just giving you a general idea of how to do things. How to get the muck in there. Little, little pitfalls that I've learned over the years. There's a couple of good pointing companies, you know, good, good guys on YouTube, you know. They know so much about line work, you know, some of spending time reading about it and learning and Different mixtures and you know, fair play to those blokes. I could watch them all day long. There's some know what they're talking about, and there's some that actually talk a load of old stories. You know? Again, I've got a bit of an indent here on these bricks, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put loads on there. Toss it in and you know it'll blend in it. Look, look like it's been there. When you, you, you when you're, you're doing your perks and what have you, please do make sure that you push it to the back of the perk, okay? It's no good finding a narrow perk like that, okay? And just getting a load of muck and just going straight in with it like because you're not getting to the back of the perk, right? You need to get that right in there. That's what pointing is. So push it in there. Wiggle it about, get it in there. The guard is only tight you. you. You've got to fill that perp up. It's no shortcuts. And another little tip. Keep your muck in a bucket here. I use a rubber truck. 
and I keep it on top of my DeWalt box so it's at the right level. You don't want it on the floor because mate, you're bending down and just do your wristing all the time. This one might, it's a little bit heavy. couple of weeks here to probably three weeks it might even run into more I've left the calendar open for uh, an extra week run over time so So again, I've gone with the, the thin pointing tool to get it in there. And as I said before, I will put another link up down below uh, of where to get these from. You know, actually, they're, they're not expensive at all. I think I bought about three or four boxes of them. It's always handy to have in stock. Take my lucky stars this week, at least I'm working inside. It was like a midsummer's day the other day, yeah, beautiful. Some of the jobs you go to in the arsehole of the world, mate, they're, they're just in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Wind's coming up now. So, uh, I think it's storm anus, isn't it? I think the right arsehole of a storm. Or is it anus? Whatever. Whatever. Sucky windy, whatever it is. I've got a little bit around the end of the brick there, but oh, I'm not going to take that out to spoil it. Get a bit of muck around it. It's quirky. Everybody's quirky in Margate. Anybody would tell you that.
know, when you've made a silk purse out of a pig's ear, it's really nice to put your name to it. You know? I like to do that on all my dogs. A little bit of added, you know, extra. You know you've done it, and when you look at it, it's finished. And this is satisfaction that you get from a job when you walk away from it, you know. Your clients are happy, they're smiling, they're pleased with what they've done. And that's what it's all about. A little smile on their faces. Some appreciate the work you put into the, the jobs, some don't, you know. Some really don't. And I, I think it's just a, a lack of understanding of what actually goes into doing this, this work type of work. Some of these boys do these YouTube channels, don't they? Chat and chat and chat and chat. I can't, I can't get lost in the conversation all the time. They're not talking about a bug twiddle. Don't roll the kit. But, you know, what do you do? Yeah, I could just do a video of me pointing and whatever. People are probably saying, fuck's sake, shut up, mate, will you? You're ranting on about nothing. Prefer a bit of chit chat then. Oh, yeah. Just tell me if you don't, I'll keep your mouth shut. Play a bit of music over the top here. Copy, copy right through shit. It's nice to have somebody explain what they're doing, you know. Obviously, you've got any questions. Well, you can ask him, me. Just joking, if you've got any questions, just drop me, drop me a message, you know. I'll be only too pleased to answer it. Information and knowledge shouldn't cost a penny, mate. Well, Dave, he's, he's off today. He's off today. He, he's, been, he's got trouble with his TV area, all right. And uh, he phoned the guy up. He went, "Yeah, it's twenty-five pound to come out and look at it. <laughs> twenty-five pound to come out and look at it. Quote on the job." I think I'm doing it wrong, you know. Doing something wrong. Twenty-five pound to have a look at it. I said, Dave, mate, I've got to come up with looks at it, told you, up and at it. You know, we spend half our time on roofs, so why are you getting somebody to do it, you know? Came out a few days ago outside the house, and there was a, an old TV area laying on the driveway. Come down to the neighbour's house. The old roofers are going to be busy after this one. Bet your life on that. You'll get all the cowboys out, mate, after a storm. Always do. You watch Sal the Trover pole go up. <laughs> I 
don't know what a chroma pole is, it's a, a paint on sealer. It's a bit, bit expensive, but could you, could you out of trouble. It's like, it's like a paint on bitumen with uh, fibres in it. It is very good. Expensive, but it's very good. It's a lot for doing valleys and stuff like that, you know, temporary repairs. It lasts for quite a few years. There we go. Rent and all that shit again. Yes, Dan? Summoned. So, in a bit. 